Hello. This is a hands-on training to show how to use the Coheron software design kit to develop instruments uh, with a significant amount of digital signal processing on zinc-based FPGA boards. There's a presentation here on a slide share at this address here which goes through the procedure but uh, in this video we'll be doing the, the hands-on what the actual commands are. But this presentation here uh, describes the process and what we're going to do which is the aim of this hands-on training is as shown in I think slide 11 yes, um, build a software designed radio in blocks on the FPGA itself. So the first thing to do is to get an installation of the Coheron software development kit. So we'll click on develop FPGA designs on their website. Look at the documentation and follow the instructions on setting up a development machine. Okay, essentially this consists of making sure you've got some Ubuntu installation, could be on a virtual machine, and then git cloning the repository itself, which when you've got it onto your system will look something like this. A set of directories within Coherent SDK. And there are various uh, directories of interest. Uh, within examples here we'll see some example instruments that they've already developed and for this exercise we've created a new directory called instruments where we're going to put our own custom instruments but there's some other directories of note uh, there's a directory called fpga within that there's a directory called cores and here we have various ip cores uh, that will put blocks into the block design that we're going to develop uh, in this in this tutorial. Now, a few of these are predefined, and some of these we can define ourselves, so we can generate custom IP cores for use in our design. Also, um, we have boards, and there are some predefined boards, these are FPGA boards using the, the Zinc FPGA. Here we have the Z board and the Red Pitaya. For this exercise we'll be using the, the Red Pitaya board. Now the Red Pitaya is uh, a very powerful board. Uh, you will see information at this website. Basically it's this, this little board here with two onboard ADCs running at 125 megasamples a second and two DACs also running at 125 megasamples a second. So that, that's an ideal platform for building a software defined radio and essentially this is a Internet of Things device that we can control over the network from some graphical client. Um, in our case we can develop either some Python application or run an application within a, in a web browser. We'll go back to the directory where we have the stuff. There's another directory that's worth noting, temporary directory. Now all the constructed files ready to build our application are developed here and then copied as a zip file onto the target board, copied over the network. Now these, as the name suggests, are temporary and we can delete them and just recreate them at will using make commands. What's important for version control and controlling the provenance of the design of the instrument are the files within this directory instruments. And within those there are several files that we will need to construct our device. This one here which has the hardware drivers for affecting registers on the FPGA and there's a, a configuration file which uh, essentially describes the, the instrument itself. Anyway, to build one from scratch what 
what's a good idea to do is to start with one of the examples which is similar to the instrument that we want to do, has the inputs and outputs and functions that we're likely to use. And in building a software-defined radio, we'll need some analog inputs and we'll need some analog outputs and control a few things. And in fact, uh, this pulse generator instrument here is fairly close to those requirements, so we'll just copy that from the examples, control C, into instruments, we'll copy here, paste, and so we'll rename this SDR for software defined radio. Okay. And now we'll start editing these files and make them do what we want to do. That's um, perform the software defined radio function. So we'll start by renaming these files. Uh, this one we can get rid of. Um, this one, so we'll rename that sdr.py. These are the C++ drivers. SDR. Config, uh, that's the default name for all configuration files. We'll leave that as it is. Anyway, we'll need to edit these files. Uh, let's start with the block design. This is a starting point for the set of IP cores uh, that we're going to use in our digital signal processing. So let's open that with a text editor. So a few things here and a bit here which describes ports and presets and this is going to bring in an IP core that uh, provides an interface with the ADC and the DAX. Um, and the clock is going to be named here. This is standard as well. Now, the config and status registers, uh, they're actually going to be pulled in from the config.yml, so that's where we will uh, rename the registers for our particular application. We'll leave this connection to the LEDs for the moment. Now, this is a wiring of an input to the status register taking a signal from the ADC. Uh, let's get rid of that. Uh, the DAC controller, this is in the pulse generator, it sends a, f a fixed pulse signal to the DAC. We're not going to need that. Or, nor this pulse generator core. We're not going to need that. Let's have a bit of pulse generator, pulse data. Get rid of that. The axis stream clock converter. This will allow data streamed from the digital signal processing part running at the ADC clock frequency and shift the clock to work at the FPGA clock frequency so that it can be read by the, the ARM chip. Now we're not going to use the data that predefines to go into this device or the, the handshake signal. We, we'll connect those up later. So for the moment we'll just delete them from here and we will connect them by hand in the block design. And this, the, the FIFO, which um, buffers up the data into the processor, we'll leave that. So that's all good. So let's save that. Next one up is the config.yml which describes the various uh, registers and so on for, for the instrument we're wanting to build. Okay, so starting from the top, first up the name, we're going to call this SDR. Uh, the board, that's the right board already, so we leave that. These cores, uh, we're going to use all the cores except we're not going to need this one. And we're going to stick in some extra cores that we're going to need. Okay, uh, next up, these are the memory addresses of 
various bits of address space that's going to be read by the arm which is reading in registers and FIFO data from the, the logic. The DAC we're not going to use. So we'll not depart there, we'll remove that. We will need the ADC FIFO. This is uh, reading data back, uh, streaming data back from the logic, which, which will be useful. And these two are the control registers used to define the set point of our instrument and the status to read back any any control variables we might need to. Um, the control registers we list here that we want, we will keep the LED. We will define something which we'll call receive frequency. And so that will define what what frequency we, we want to pick up with the radio. And we'll also define a volume to set the sensitivity of the device. Status registers, we're not going to read back the ADC onto a register, but we do want to be able to read back the signal strength. So that will give us an idea of how much signal we're getting at the input. Um, we can leave these. We don't need DAC. Do need the ADC, and we've still got two ADCs. These are the pin definitions of how the FPGA connects out to the various things on the board. They're standard for this particular board. Uh, if we were going to use the extension pins, there's another set of pins for the, the headers on the red pit eye, but we don't need those in this design, so we won't add them. Uh, these are the drivers here we will have something that we're going to call sdr.hpp and this dot slash indicates that this will be located in the same directory and these are common common drivers here okay now on the web part for the moment we're going to comment this out uh, because we're not going to do that for the moment. We can think about adding that later. But for the moment, we'll just keep it simple. Save that. The file we're just editing, config.yml. And if we look back up at the top again, we'd mentioned these are the IP cores that we're going to use in this design. So these were the ADC DAC interface. Uh, these are going to set up the interface to set uh, control register values and readback status values. And there's a bunch of other things here. Um, so, for example, there's a one clock pulse a core, which the purpose of that is simply to generate a pulse which lasts one clock cycle triggered by a rising edge on an input. So, we'll look now at how to to create these IP cores, our custom cores that we're going to need for this application. So we go back out to uh, FPGA cores and the name of the core that we're looking at. We see that there are a few files here which are going to be used to create this core. And the important one is this. Um, which just gives our, a block a name that when we bring it in in IP Integrator this is the name that will appear and we can just fill in a few things about who wrote it and where the core came from. Okay, that's straightforward. Also there's the HDL source itself which in this case is, is very very simple. Just uh, generates a single clock cycle pulse. Uh, but then we're going to, to test this, so we've written a, a simple test bench. And that's all we need. Uh, we then get that going. So this will bring up the Vivado environment, the graphical um, application. And then we can run, 
run the test bench and see that this operates as expected. So we pull that up, have a look at that, right click full view and we'll zoom in to where the action happened, just here. So the input trig rose high and immediately following that we get a pulse which lasts for one clock cycle, so that behaves as expected. So now we can get out of this. And then to actually make use of this, as you saw, we need to mention the name of that call with its path in the config.yml file. So to recap what we've done so far and what we're about to do, um, we're developing an instrument which is going to run on a Zinc chip, and this consists of an FPGA part that will run the fast signal processing and an ARM processor that will run run some uh, uh, C++ programs which will act as drivers to interface between what's going on on the FPGA part and external clients across the network. So uh, this produces the driver and we can run, for example, Python clients Now, before we go ahead and run the make file in anger, there's just a, a few more files that it's worth looking at in the SDR instrument directory. Now, we've copied across uh, this pulse.hpp file, which are the, um, the C++ drivers that are going to run on the arm of the target board. And there's some Python libraries and programs that we're going to use as well. So let's have a look at what we had in the pulse.hpp, which is borrowed from the pulse generator program. And this has a bunch of stuff to do with generating pulses. And we're going to edit that and come up with something that's going to look more like this, um, which has reference to the, the um, the registers that we want to set, the, the receive frequency and the volume and so on. So, so these are the, the um, functions to allow us to set the volume, so load the register value on the FPGA and receive frequency and to be able to read back status values. The FIFO stuff we've kept the same as it was for Pulse, um, sorry, Pulse HPP. Um, the FIFO stuff's just the same, most of it. And then there's a, a Python library which allows us to access those functions from uh, a, a Python program, uh, a client program running on the, the client machine, which then will connect to the, um, the, the red retire over the, over the network.